floating palaces, elegant yachts. I love all luxury boats, but the one I'm sailing on today offers me much more than a magnificent decor. It will sweep me off on a voyage back in time. For one week, I'm going to be a Hollywood star, the pirate, and Bonnie, the wife of an ambassador, or Maharaja. I'm on board the legendary Sea Cloud. When I learned of the glamorous and rollicking past of this 110 meter long four master, I immediately signed up for a trip. Listen up, now it's quite a saga. In 1931, in the depths of the depression, that Edward Francis Hutton and his wife, Marjorie Merriweather Post, had this incredible sailing ship constructed. This boat was like their castle, but a castle that could sail the seven seas. Then, in turn, it was a floating U.S. Embassy to the Soviet Union, weather ship during World War II, yacht of Trujillo, the Dominican dictator, abandoned wreck in the tropical waters of Panama. In 1979, when the sea cloud was resurrected and recovered its former splendor, it began a new life as a luxury cruise ship. As soon as you set foot on board, you can feel that this boat has a soul, a history. I immediately fell under the charm of the sea cloud and its captain. Yeah, <laughs> the history, the history of this ship is uh, so fascinating and long to to be, you know, explained in a couple words. Uh, but uh, what is great, she's been. Uh, built as a wedding gift, uh, one of the wealthy American family. Then uh, she was uh, even participating in Second World War, as a, not as a battleship, <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, she was enrolled in the American Navy. Yeah. Once she was uh, even uh, in Russia, staying in the Neva in St. Petersburg, American Embassy. <laughs> yeah. Vladimir, or excuse me, Captain Pusharev, heads a crew of 60. I'm particularly impressed by the rope-walking sailors that work aloft in the rigging. In the sea cloud, she's real square rigger at first. Uh, there is no any push button controls of the sails over here. And they are sailing in all traditional way. Our guests, our passengers, they can uh, not only enjoy our service, they can sail, they can watch, and they can feel uh, real sailing. That's an experience, unique experience in 21st century. Magnificent. There's something almost unreal about this boat. It was when it was originally built, there were only 10 to 12 cabins on board for the family and for their guests. But to make it profitable as a commercial cruise ship, they had to add some more cabins and they did it very nicely. But I think passengers who come on board, they come here and they are very impressed about the luxury atmosphere in a very family-like atmosphere the same way. I'm sure that like me, you are dying to see the inside. The 31 staterooms are all different, but from the smallest 10 square meter cabins to the largest suites of 40 square meters, they are all well decorated and equipped with period furniture. Here's mine, 24 square meters, all colonial furniture. The brown of the mahogany, the gold of the fittings, the blue of the fabrics, the harmonious colors, the attention to detail. It's one of the loveliest cabins on the boat.
it seems that a host of show business and political personalities occupied it before me. At least that's what my cabin steward told me. I'm the head housekeeper on this boat, so I'm in charge of all the cabins and everything what is regarding laundry or um, bed linen and towels. I myself take care of four suites, cabin one, two, three and four. And overall I'm in charge for all the cabins, so it's going to be 32 cabins. Katya lets me take a look at cabin number one. It was a suite of Marjorie, the Sea Cloud's original owner. The choice of furniture and the decor have remained faithful to the luxurious atmosphere of its early days. Um, it is possible to have lunch or dinner in the cabin, mostly in the luxury cabins, so in the suites, because there is a space to put the table. Um, what is also a little bit common, or it's getting more common, is to have a small champagne reception in one of the suites that somebody's inviting some other guests and giving some champagne and having a small party down here. For me, to be in a suite like this, it is luxury. Furnished in Louis XIV style, this suite is quite impressive. A false fireplace, a vast bed, a Carrara marble bathroom. You could easily forget that you're on board a ship sailing through the heart of the Mediterranean. The luxury and comfort of the suites is really very impressive. But I already miss the teak wood decks, the varnished wood stairways, the rigging, and the blue canvas deck chairs. They're just oozing with 1930s charm. They may not be very comfortable, but I let myself drift off for a little siesta under the Mediterranean sun. The sea cloud has dropped anchor for the day. Some passengers have gone ashore to do some sightseeing or shopping. I'd rather stay on board. I want to make the very most of the boat, starting with the splendid library lounge. Oddly enough, a false fireplace is planted conspicuously in the middle of the room. Probably a statement that the comfort on board the sea cloud is every bit as good as that of a fine New Jersey mansion. Funny, isn't it? Here, in the dining room, we find the same woodwork and paintings with the same theme of far-off exotic horizons. Here in this restaurant, in the original restaurant, we're holding the welcome and open house and farewell dinner. So that's more um, exclusive dinner. The capacity of the restaurant is for 66 passengers. You see, this is not a high amount of passengers and so we can offer the, the guests really good service and excellent food and dishes. It's surely an excellent restaurant, but I'll put the chef's talent to the test another time. Right now, I'm going up out to the Lido deck to try the buffet lunch. Here I meet Simon, the hotel manager. He's the living memory of the sea cloud. He's been working on the boat for 29 years, and he's still bubbling over with enthusiasm. I do it for the starter, that's I mean, all the salad, 
and the, everything what is cold. The important is introduce the buffet to the passenger. And after, when you make him a little bit say something, make happy him, then they're going more easy, more friendly, you know, just, you must say something. You must introduce a little bit, that you mean you make them familiar with the buffet. After a short stop in Italy, the sea cloud once again sets sail. Even without its 3,000 square meters of sail, it still cuts a fine figure. A genuine sailing ship, a stateroom to die for, the captain's smile. It's only been two days, and already I've fallen under the charm. Yeah, so the nice thing on board the Sea Cloud is also that we are a small group of crew members, and the crew members themselves are like a family. And as it's a small ship and only a few passengers with 64 maximum, also the crew and the passengers mix a little bit in a way. And sometimes we do a swim stop and of course the passengers can go for a swim, but the crew is allowed to do it as well. So I think it's a nice, nice thing to have this family-like atmosphere also between the crew members and the passengers. The captain has dropped anchor in the middle of nowhere to offer us the swimming pool of our dreams, the Mediterranean. I'm no Esther Williams, but under the watchful eye of Simon, who's playing lifeguard, I'm willing to take a little dip. Now I'm dry, dressed, hair's done, a touch of makeup. I'm ready to go back on deck to watch the boat get underway and ask the captain a simple little question about the latest fashion in cruise wear. Uniform on board of uh, the uniform coat is uh, the common thing on board of passenger ships. Their responsibility uh, to, the, to the ship, they, they present the ship. The blue uniform is a working, uh, working uniform that they just die, day by day, uh, their crew, they wear a, a blue uniform when they are working aloft or on deck. Whenever they are on watch, they are dressed in white. And whenever they are uh, driving um, tender boats or zodiacs, uh, ferry passengers, they are dressed in white. Curled up in the deck chair, I'm entranced as I observe the shifting colors of the sky, a delicate moment of fleeting beauty. Don't tell anyone, but in my little notebook, I write poems about the transients of time, the beauty of nature, and the recipes I've picked up here and there on my trips. That reminds me, I'll have to visit the galley and see if the chef can give me some tips. While I'm waiting to go to dinner with the other passengers, I pop into the bar. It is a family ship. And the atmosphere on board Sea Club, most of the passengers that we had are very uh, sophisticated people, but they're very nice people. High quality, I would say. But as you can really see, they're all smiling because they like the ship and they like us probably.
Dinner is accompanied by some soothing background jazz as the sea cloud sails through the Mediterranean night. This is not yet the sea cloud's haute cuisine, just a pleasant interlude between sky and sea. I was up early this morning and had breakfast out on deck. The air was still cool and then the sun peeked up over the horizon. I just love to feel the first rays of the sun on my skin. I met the chief engineer at dinner last night. We drank a little and talked a lot about food, pistons, vodka, horsepower, and fine Bordeaux wines. A rag bag of conversation. So to straighten out a few technical points, he invited me to make a discreet visit to the engine room this morning. I was expecting to plunge into a dark underworld of noise and grease, but I find myself in a kind of museum a display of all sorts of gauges and dials. The sea cloud is much more than a mere boat. It's a work of art. From the engine room all the way up to the bridge, present day navigational instruments rub shoulders with those of yesteryear. No generation gap here. Whenever we are sailing, we are sailing. We have to have engines to be on time. Still, schedule still existing. You have to arrive in the harbor and get alongside safely. Under the sails, it would be, let's say, quite a challenging. <laughs> From the upper deck, I admire the slow maneuvers that bring the ship into port. This is my last day on the sea cloud. I usually like to go ashore and wander around a bit during the stops. But this time, I've decided to stay on board and squeeze the last drop of pleasure out of the boat and to jot down some notes in my Moliskin notebook about ships and luxury. I have my notions, but how do the captain and crew see things? Uh, passengers come in on board and they wish to sail, and they wish to sail as much as possible. The sailing is what they mostly enjoy, and that's what uh, is a luxury. Luxury for me on this boat with regard to passengers is this special history about the boat, that it's still in service. Um, the five-star service we offer, but in a very family-like atmosphere. It's more than luxury. A restaurant and everything, and you are just feeling like you are young. We are Rolls Royce at sea. All these reasons, of course, make this a luxurious boat. But even more so for me, because it stirs up long lost childhood emotions. Tales of adventure, where Jack Sparrow and the Pirates of the Caribbean meet Fletcher Christian and the mutineers of the Bounty, Peter Pan and Captain Hook. For the last time, the sun sets on the sea cloud. It's time for the gala dinner. Mm -hmm. 
This is a sacred moment. Seated at my table, I consult the program. Perfect. Let the show begin. The chef is a true artist. I'm impressed. My compliments. And I make a mental note to ask for his molten chocolate cake to die for. But there are still surprises in store. I go to the promenade deck for a breath of fresh air and notice a couple dining al fresco by candlelight at a little table set up just for them. Simon and the accordionist come to their table to wish them happy anniversary. It's just too much for me. A little tear trickles down my cheek. I need a glass of water. Maybe I shouldn't have eaten the molten chocolate cake. My last night under the sails. Last stroll around the teakwood decks. I'm heading off to bed, but then I run into the entire crew of the Sea Cloud, gathered to bid farewell to the passengers, fittingly accompanied by a rousing chorus of sea shanties. 